Okay, this is a complete recap of what we've got coming up next here, which is variable acceleration in one dimension. So we're now just doing one thing that kind of steps out. I remember I said this whole module was themed around, this whole unit was themed around vectors. This is the one bit that's not to do with vectors. Um, and it's exactly the same as what you have in year 12 mechanics. Apart from now, instead of it being polynomials, there are things like this. There's things like cos, there's things like ln, there's things like things that require the chain rule, there's E functions. So it's just exactly the same stuff. So it's kind of nice to see this as a brief bit of revision, okay? So here we've got a particle is moving in a straight line with acceleration uh, given as this. The velocity of the particle at time t equals zero is one over two pi meters per second. Find an expression for the velocity at time t seconds. Okay, well, we've already got this reminder on the side here. I've been talking to my year 12s about this because I've been teaching them that. In order to remember how these go, s, v, and a, they go in the same way as SUVAT does, s, u, v, a, t. And to go down, you differentiate, d, d, down, differentiate. There's many other ways of memorizing it as well. I also think about the units, that if I'm trying to um, divide by time each time as I go down. So this is going to be integrate to go the other way around. So for part A of the question, I'm trying to find out what the velocity is. And I know that the velocity is the integral of cos of 2 pi t dt. What's the integral of cos of 2 pi t? Almost, one we've got, sine. it's definitely this, but what's it going to be one over? One over two pi sine two pi t. Someone said a half, but remember that pi is also part of the, the constant of the coefficient of t, I mean. And you also get a plus c. And we've been told that when t is equal to zero, v is equal to one over two pi. They told us that here. So we then get one over two pi is equal to... When I put zero in here, what do I get? No calculus. Zero. zero, I just get zero plus c. So clearly c is equal to one over two pi. Hence, v is equal to one over two pi sine of two pi t plus one over two pi. We then want to find out what the maximum speed is. So there's a couple of different ways you could find out what the maximum speed is. In fact, I can think of three different ways, I think, how you could find the maximum speed. Make what equal zero? Good. The maximum speed, maximum speed is when the acceleration is zero. You can kind of think about that in what we've talked about before, why maximum speed is acceleration is zero. That's one of my ways of thinking about it. What's another way of finding maximum speed, do you think? Good. You could make this thing here the maximum value that it could possibly be. We know that the maximum value of this is 1. So my second technique would be my uh, knowledge of trig functions, knowing that sine is going to be between minus 1 and 1, sine of whatever it is, sine of theta. So that's one of the things I could do. There's a third way I could think about it as well. This one's basically the same as the first one. I could differentiate this and make that equal zero because we know then it's a turning point. But if you differentiate the velocity, you get the acceleration. So you make the acceleration equal zero. So you can either know that as a fact or you can think about maximum via differentiation. Which of these three do you think I find the easiest here? Or I think the trig function one looks like it's the easiest because if I'm trying to say what's the biggest thing that this can be, well, clearly I know the biggest thing that this thing can be is 1. So the maximum value of v is just going to be 1 over 2 pi multiplied by 1, because that's the biggest thing it can be, plus 1 over 2 pi. And 1 over 2 pi plus 1 over 2 pi is 2 over 2 pi, which is just 1 over pi. That's the maximum value that it can be. Or you make that 
equal to zero, find out what the value of t is, and then substitute that back into here. It's a little bit longer. If you found out the maximum value of this, so if you made this equal zero, you would get that t was equal to, you'd have to do quite a bit more actually to do that, it's kind of annoying. Now it wants us to say the distance traveled in the first three seconds. So how do you find the distance traveled? Good. So you have to integrate the velocity with respect to time. However, there are some things you need to be careful about. Do you remember what things you need to be careful about? Good. If the curve that you're integrating ever goes below zero, then you need to do the integration part separately. Just like if you had a curve that looked like this, and I said, like, oh, integrate the curve between here and here, you'd get a positive, a negative, and a positive. So you'd technically need to integrate between here and here, and here and here, and here and here. And this area, you'd need to make it become positive. That's way back in year 12 stuff that you've done things that look like that. So we need to have a little think to ourselves and say, OK, well, this is what the velocity of it looks like. Will this ever be um, zero or less than zero? Why not? Because I, I agree, I don't think it will ever be less than zero. Uh, Good. So if this is the smallest thing that can ever possibly be, which is minus one, then the smallest thing that the velocity can be is zero. So the minimum velocity is zero. The maximum velocity is one over pi. So it's never going to dip below the axis. You must, must, must think about this before you dive in and do the integration. Because if you do the integration and it's like a five marker and you're like, wow, that's so easy for five marks, it's probably because you haven't done that. OK, so uh, the minimum v is 0, so it is always above slash on the axis. So we don't have to worry about it. We can just integrate between 0 and 3 and just find out what it is. So I'm going to integrate between 0 and 3, 1 over 2 pi sine 2 pi t plus 1 over 2 pi uh, with respect to time. What's the integral of sine of 2 pi t? So it's going to be a minus, yeah. and it's going to be a cos of 2 pi t. Yeah. 1, over two pi 1 over 4 pi squared cos of 2 pi t because you've got the 2 pi and the 2 pi. 1 over cos 2 pi t plus 1 over 2 pi t. No plus c because we've got limits. OK, so we just get it between 0 and 3. Now, this is going to be a number. Maybe not, actually. Yeah. We're just going to, do we want exact or just to the distance? We're just going to shove it in the calculator. If you wanted it, <laughs> if you wanted it exact, you could, because you know you're going to get the cos of 6 pi. Now, the cos of 6 pi is, <laughs> what's, one. one, good. The cos of 6 pi is one, because the cos of 2 pi is one. So actually, I'm going to do, I'm going to do it slow while you all type it in. So I get 1 over 4 pi squared plus 3 over 2 pi. The cos of 0 is 1. So I'm minusing this, and that's 0. They are going to cancel, so I get 3 over 2 pi. So the distance traveled is 0 0.477 meters to three significant figures. And if you typed it in the long way, you should have come up with that, but taken a lot longer than me. So if you got this question, you would say to yourself, ah, it's variable acceleration. That means I need to do integration and differentiation. One more example, and then we're done. And then the next lesson, you can predict what's going to happen anyway. It's just with vectors. It's just easy. Did I 
Uh, it might be on Thursday because I'm trying to get you to finish stats before the exam, which is the following Wednesday. There's going to be a full stats paper and a full mechanics paper because we'll have finished both of them by then. It just won't be a full, it won't be full pure papers because we still haven't done sequences, binomial and proof and numerical methods. And you can also check your answers on the graph as well. You can check that on the graph. Yeah, actually, that's, if you've got a graphics calculator, it might be good for me to show you this. Um, so there's a feature you can do on here if you do have this. The graph was uh, 1 over 2 pi sine of 2 pi t plus 1 over 2 pi. which looks like this. So if you have a graphics calculator, this is what you should use it for. You can see that you don't need to worry at all about the fact that it's going beneath the curve, OK? You can then also check your answer by doing this G-sol, which is like graphical solving. And first of all, if you wanted to, you could find out the maximum speed. So I can hit max. And the maximum speed is 0 0.318, which I believe is 1 over pi. Yep. It is 1 over pi, so that's good. Then the other thing that you can do with G-solve is you can scroll across and you can integrate. And you can integrate it with res from 0 to 3. And I think you can type that in as 3. And it's just integrated it as 0 0.555. We just said that the answer was 3 over 2 pi, right? Hmm. Oh, I did put the lower bound is 0. And the upper bound is three. So what have I done wrong? Maybe I'm in. I'm in degrees mode. That's why. Yeah. So set up. We'll fix it now. How do I fix it? It still will have this. I don't. So I'll do zero is the lower. Three is the upper. And we get 0 0.47764, which is what we got for the other one. So if you don't, so if you have a graphics calculator, this is the kind of stuff you should be using it for to check answers. Okay. How did I do what? I'll do it on trig actually, and then I can press plus to zoom in. So it's really good if you want to use that to check that it goes above the axis. If you have this calculator, this is how you should use it. And then integrate, you can go to G solve, and then it's got all these amazing things it can tell you about. Um, it can actually help you, solve, it can help you solve two equations. So if you type the two equations on and then press intersect, it will give you the intersection of them. So if you've got a spare 100 quid lying around, then you know what to ask for. Obviously, I'm joking. You're not going to have a spare 100 quid lying around. OK, we'll just do one more of these. Uh, particle of mass 6. Six kilograms is moving on the positive x-axis. At time t seconds, the displacement from the origin is this. So we've been told that the displacement is 2t to the 3 over 2 plus, you might like to think of this as a third e to the minus 2t. And we want to find the velocity when t is equal to 1.5. If I know s, how do I go to v? I'm just going to differentiate this. So I've got 2 times 3 over 2, which is just... 3t to the 1 over 2. So I brought the power down and reduced the power by 1. And then I'm going to have uh, not plus a third. I'm going to have minus 2 thirds e to the minus 2t. Nice and easy. Just differentiate it to do that. We know that t is 1.5. So we'll have 3 times 1.5 to the half minus 2 over 3 e to the minus 2 times t, which is minus 3. So that's 3 times 1.5 to the half minus 2 thirds e to the minus 3. I got this. It then says, given that the particle is acted on by a single force of variable magnitude f, which acts in the direction of the positive x-axis, 
find the value of f when t equals 2. What? Why are they randomly talking about f? How can they start talking about f? Because force is mass times acceleration. So we also then, for part b of the question, we're going to have to use the fact that f equals ma. You would have looked at this in year 12, that there's a vector version of this. So we know that the variable force is going to be the mass, which is 6, multiplied by the acceleration. But I don't have the acceleration. Differentiate it. So to find out what the acceleration is, actually, why am I putting it in vector form? This isn't a vector question. It's just a force question. So it's f equals ma. So f is going to be 6a. So I'll differentiate this again. So I'm going to get 3 over 2, t to the minus a half, plus 4 over 3, e to the minus 2t. I've just differentiated this to get here. And they want us to know what the value of f is when t is 2. So a is 3 over 2, 2 to the minus a half, plus 4 over 3, e to the minus 4. And I believe you get this. Oh, that's a 5. And so the force is equal to the mass times the acceleration, which is 6.51 newtons to three significant figures. So it's just the same stuff as before, apart from they might give you some other functions. As soon as you clock its variable, you need to think about doing integration and differentiation, same as year 12. <laughs>